Hello everyone, and welcome to the Why Does My Horse podcast series. In this series, we use science to answer some of the common questions you might have about your horse child. If you want to get to know your horse better, then this is the place for you. Let's get into it. Ah, the vices. In humans, we define these as excessive smoking, or that nasty habit of having a few too many beers or the unstoppable urge to binge your new favorite TV series for 18 hours non-stop until your eyes become blurry and you look like an exhausted raccoon. In horses, we define vices as the unwanted behavior we see our horses displaying, such as crib biting, weaving, wind sucking, or box walking. Vices are technically known as stereotypies, and are special in their own twisted way. Unlike biting or kicking, they aren't learned behaviors that serve a purpose. They are, by their very nature, meaningless activities that simply burn time and energy for no reason whatsoever. Contrary to popular belief, they don't stem from boredom, and horses don't learn the behaviors from each other. In fact, The bottom line of stereotypies comes down to stress and the way that it alters the brain of our horse child. Stereotypies are never observed in feral horses, or in fact in any animals living in their natural environment. It has been called the disease of domestication, a term that almost sounds religious in its severity. Horses are fairly simple creatures and need only forage, friends, and freedom to be perfectly content. We all know vaguely that the life we offer our horses is not like the life they would have had if they were left to their own devices to roam in the wild, and frankly, in many ways that feels like an upgrade to us. Our horse children no longer have to get rained on or be left outside in the snow or walk for miles to find some scraps to eat. Quite frankly, they live a life of comparative luxury, at least from our perspective. But the bottom line is, no matter how much we don't like it, and we really, really don't like it, this isn't what our horses need. It's a life of stress, which leads to high levels of anxiety and frustration, and actually changes the structure of their brain. If you've seen enough horses, you will notice that stereotypies fall into two categories, the chewy oral stimulation kind and the body movement locomotive kind. Chewing-based stereotypies are thought to originate from a need to engage in oral behaviors, such as grazing, grooming, or suckling. Movement-based stereotypies are based on the need for, well, movement, such as roaming and foraging. Both categories have something in common though. They are wrapped up in the brain's dopamine reward system and essentially become addictions to our noble steeds. Normally, the brain releases dopamine when a meaningful action is taken. But in the case of stereotypies, the brain releases dopamine when a useless action is taken, such as cribbing or weaving. In fact, the brain becomes so used to this pattern of working that it becomes motivated to perform more useless activities, which makes horses easier to train, but also makes them susceptible to pick up other vices. So how do we break the habit? To be brutally honest, it's darn and near impossible. Your horse child isn't going to stop his addiction when you apply a collar to his neck or weave proof gate to his stable. He's going to hurt himself doing something that makes him happy or adjust and pick up a different habit that has the same result. Because it's based on a neurological dysfunction, it can't be untrained like biting or kicking. The best course of action is the proactive one. Stop it before it starts. There are a number of factors that affect the likelihood of a horse developing stereotypies, such as stressful weaning, lack of forage or time spent eating, being fed concentrates, 
having bedding other than straw, which is edible, having limited social interactions, and limited free time outside of the stable, and access to slow feeders when stabling is necessary. By understanding our horses' needs and working with them rather than against them, we can make the experience of domestication a positive one rather than one that damages them. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about our incredible equine friends. I feel like it's compulsory to add that it would be great if you could like, share, comment and subscribe. We're also available on Apple Podcast as well as Podcast for Spotify. See you next time.